So this is being posted on Saturday. National, Na National Pet Day. National Pet Day. This is Zuzu. This is our dog. She looks like an Ewok a little bit. We gave her quarantine haircut because we couldn't see her face. She looked great. Yeah. This is Michael, and I'm Alexandria, and this is Zuzu. And today's episode is about pizza. Welcome to the full measure. <laughs> Today's episode is all about pizza, and this show is really about cooking a recipe a couple of different ways. One way that's very easy and simple, and another way that takes a little bit extra work in comparing the two, and finding out if the more involved recipe really pays off. One thing that's very true about me is that I really like charts and graphs and spreadsheets. It's really no surprise that I found a way to put that into this channel. For example, here is the spreadsheet that I keep for our sourdough starter. I'll link that in the description. It's a pretty handy little spreadsheet. You can put the time that you you want to be done baking in the times for all of the other steps along the way adjust and it calculates your hydration percentages and all that. That's for another episode. I found a way to relate my love of charts and graphs into the show and I promise I will keep it as simple as possible. No need to make <laughs> cooking and having fun too mathematical. But I think this example will help really illustrate kind of what this show's all about. Our chart has two lines. The horizontal represents how much effort you have to put in, increasing from left to right. The vertical line is the worth itness, increasing from bottom to top. Something like sourdough would be in the top right corner because it has a lot of steps and it can be temperamental, but the payoff is outstanding. This is where grilled cheese lands, little effort, pretty decent payoff. And way down here, brewing beer. A ton of work, and you can buy beers that are way better than anything you'll be able to make at home. Not that it's not fun, I had a blast when I used to brew beer, but you know what I don't do anymore? Brew beer. Wasn't worth it. Feel free to get at me in the comments. Now that the math is out of the way, now that the charts are done, we're gonna make pizza two ways. We're gonna make pizza out of a can of pizza dough with just regular mozzarella cheese and pepperoni on top. The second recipe we're gonna make sauce and the dough from scratch and use buffalo mozzarella. Very simple, very classic margarita Neapolitan style pizza. We'll make both pizzas, we'll taste both pizzas, and we'll let you know our thoughts about the amount of work that it took to make it happen. These are the things you'll need for our first recipe. It obviously cannot be compared to a Neapolitan pizza, but this is about showing how easy it is to make an easy pizza that isn't just a frozen pizza. Prepare a greased nonstick cookie sheet and pop the dough out of this little weird pop tube thing, one of the best parts about making this kind of pizza, place it on the sheet and spread the dough until it's about a half inch thick. I'm using some expert pizza moves here by docking the dough with a fork before putting this naked dough into your oven at 400 degrees for about eight minutes. Once your dough has had a nice little toast, top with your sauce from the can, add a little bit of mozzarella cheese, dot with some pepperonis, return to your 400 degree oven and bake for another eight to 10 minutes and uh, you have pizza. I was expecting it to be way worse than this. Like legitimately, I thought it was gonna be like way, way worse, but maybe this is playing into that. I've never had a piece of pizza that was too bad. Yeah. This was something fun that you could make like with some kids, like some young, like super young kids that just like you wanna have, especially right now where there's people that are cooped up inside, like this might be something really fun to do. As far as ease goes, this was more work than a frozen pizza and it's, how, how do you feel like this stacks up next to like a frozen pizza? I feel like this just doesn't have pizza flavor. I feel like I would choose frozen pizza over that. Over that. If you just look at it as like, I got the dough out of a little can that I popped open. Um, and I made it and it looks like a pizza. Then yeah. you did it. Yeah. So next we're gonna make as close to as we can to like Neapolitan pizza at home. We. We, together, both of us. <laughs> this dough recipe comes from a New York Times article explaining where hipster pizza dough comes from. As good a place as any to start. The recipe can be found in full at fullmeasureshow.com. I'll link everything in the description. This recipe calls for fine sea salt. I only have coarse. An easy problem to solve if you have a special coffee grinder that you only use for spices. Give the coarse salt a spin for a few seconds and now you have a really cool white powder to put on your table during a video you're putting on the internet. Boom, fine sea salt. Like any good dough recipe, this uses weight rather than volume. We need 153 grams of all-purpose and 153 grams of double zero flours. So bust out that scale and try your hardest to hit those numbers exactly. Nail it in one scoop, celebrate, then ruin it with clumsiness directly after you celebrate. Whisk your two flours and your salt together in a bowl, then sprinkle the yeast into 200 grams of lukewarm water and four grams of olive oil. This helps disperse the yeast more evenly through the dough, as well as waking the yeast up a little bit from their naps. Add your slurry to your dry mixture and start incorporating together. Make sure to splash just a little bit onto your apron that you just bought for a cooking show. It does help to work the dough with your hands to get a feel for it as it hydrates. 
Leave your dough uncovered for 15 minutes to relax. On a lightly dusted surface, knead the dough for three full minutes. After you're done kneading, cut the dough into two pieces. Place the dough in a bowl, cover it, and let it rise for three to four hours at room temperature, or if you really want the best results, cover and place in the fridge for 24 hours. I made this dough the day before. The recipe we're making makes two full pizzas, so I wanted to make a variation using the best Italian sausage I've ever had. Brown the sausage in a pan. Let it really sit in the pan for a while before you touch it. This helps develop more color on the meat. Give it a few tosses and let it finish cooking. You can undercook it a little bit because it'll finish in the oven with the pizza, but you do have to cook it before. The pizza cooks so quickly that the meat won't finish without a decent head start. For the sauce, peel and chop three cloves of garlic. We will blend our sauce so there's no need to get fancy here. If you don't plan to blend your sauce, mince the garlic. The tomatoes we'll use are San Marzano's. From a can, it doesn't matter. These are delicious. Pour them into a container or a bowl and give them a squeeze just to break them up. Put the garlic in the tomatoes and then add salt and pepper to taste. Finish with about a tablespoon of olive oil. Then blend with an immersion blender. You could also use a food mill or just crush everything with your hands or a spoon. There's one more thing you'll need to make this a full measure effort. I bought this last week and it showed up the day we filmed this episode. This is a half inch steel plate for cooking. It weighs a lot. This is heavy, but it's well worth it, and you'll see why soon. I got mine from a mill on eBay, so it was covered in dirt and grease, and I had to clean it off. If you buy one intended for cooking, you won't have to deal with this step, but either way, it'll have to be seasoned like cast iron. Before you bake, put this in the second highest position of your oven and preheat the oven to 500 or 550 degrees for at least a half an hour. I did mine for about an hour. Finally, it's time to put everything together. Grab all of your ingredients, You'll also need a pizza peel and some flour for dusting everything. Start by shaping your dough on a lightly floured work surface. Work the dough into a circle and then use its own weight to help stretch it out. You really don't have to do this spin the pizza in the air thing I'm doing to try to earn internet points. You just need a circle or whatever shape you end up with. To a heavily floured pizza peel, add your dough and then add some sauce. If you're adding meat or other toppings, now is the time. If not, skip to the cheese section. For any other toppings, use less than you think. Even for the cheese, this kind of pizza is about balance, not a mountain of toppings. We'll add the basil or any other delicate ingredients after we bake. Use the peel to put your pizza in the scorching hot oven and then immediately turn it to broil and turn the light on. It only takes about three to five minutes to bake. Seriously, it is that quick. I had some reservations about the steel. I've only ever used a stone, but my friends, let me tell you. No, actually, let me show you. Finish the pizza with your fresh basil, a little bit of pepper, some Parmesan cheese, and then maybe a little drizzle of olive oil. At this point, this pizza is ready to go. It doesn't need anything else. I don't even typically put it on a plate, we just eat it right off the board. But I have to tell you, everything about this recipe, everything about this procedure was well worth it. It really wasn't that much work, it really wasn't that difficult, and I have restaurant quality pizza out of my not that great oven at home. Very impressed. Let's find out what Alexandria thinks. <laughs> <laughs> this little cheese, that's what I want. Which one? This one? That. You can have that one. You can have that piece. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks, it's got all the right stuff. Bubble stuff, melty cheese, great crust. Wow, what a treat. <laughs> <laughs> you watched all the work that I had to put into this. Mm -hmm. Would you say that it was a lot of work? I don't feel like it was a lot of work. I know that you made the dough. That, I feel like, was kind of the most extensive part. It seemed worth it. That's really good. It feels pretty spot on. It looks like that kind of pizza. It has the bubble and the crust. <laughs> and it tastes really good. I, and it's 100% decided. Like, this is 1,000% mm -hmm. worth making your own dough having that pizza steal, like do this or get frozen pizza. Cause like, yeah. compared to other pizzas. This is really good. If you can't cook at all <laughs> and you want to get really good at like cooking at home, that's the way to do it. Happy National Pet Day. <laughs> oh. So where does this pizza fall on the chart? 
where we measure effort versus worth itness. The pizza in a can was a little bit of effort. It was not very good. You could get frozen pizza better than this. That would be even less effort than that. But this Neapolitan pizza had a high amount of payoff for what I didn't feel like was a ton of work. Thank you for watching the video. We really do appreciate it. If you don't mind hitting subscribe for us, that would be really great. And if you'd like to be notified when an episode goes live, just hit the little bell icon. For all of these recipes and all of the links to everything that I use to make the pizzas today, you can go to fullmeasureshow.com. I'll put those links in the description and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Cut, done. Cool, now all I gotta do is make pizza at 10 o'clock in the morning.